Hey, good morning. I can't believe it. It's day six already on our journey where we're looking at scriptural paradoxes. I'm going to take you to the book of Acts today in Acts chapter 20, verse 35. And the scene is this. Paul, after having planted the church in Ephesus, he stays there for over three years, but now he knows that God wants to move him on. And he's saying goodbye to the elders. And in the process, he says all kinds of things to them about taking care of the church. And he warns them that people are going to cause division in the church after he leaves and all that kind of thing. But then he comes down to this one phrase or this, this one sentence in chapter 20 of Acts, verse 35. Paul says, In everything I did, he's talking to the Ephesian elders that he's now going to turn the Ephesian church over to. In everything that I did, I showed you by this kind of hard work we must help the weak. Remember the words the Lord Jesus Himself said, It is more blessed to give than to receive. Now there's the paradox. It's more blessed to give than to receive. Well, that seems kind of contradictory in certain ways to experience, and unless it's uh, blows in a fight, then it is more blessed to give the blows than to receive the blows. But is this a truth, though it sounds contradictory? I mean, you think about the joy that children have on Christmas, and there's nothing wrong with that when they receive all the presents or you may have on your birthday or whatever. So there is an authentic and legitimate joy in receiving, and we're all familiar with it. But this says there's more blessing in giving. Why would that be? Well, there's a couple of reasons. First of all, it is the character of a person who wants to give, the person who walks through life saying, how can I bless you? How can I contribute to you? What can I give you? That state of mind, that state of heart is its own blessedness. It's its own joy. It's its own peace. It's its own sense of feeling comfortable in your own skin. That's number one. Number two, when you do give to someone, you have now multiplied uh, the impact of whatever it is that you had. When you receive something, you enjoy it, and that's legitimate. There's nothing wrong with that, but it tends to stay right there. But when you give to someone, depending upon what it is, it, it, can, it can multiply. What you have now can be spread out. You can give lots to lots of different people. So it has uh, the potential to have a, wi a wider impact. There's also just this thing. There's something about the way that God wired us because we're made in His image. That, that when you're giving to someone, when you're contributing to someone, when you know you're imparting something of worth to someone, I just don't know of any richer experience in life. And uh, I think that, that anyone that's known the experience knows what this verse is saying, that it's more blessed to give than to receive. Now let me re rephrase, I'm not saying it's bad to receive. Um, we all know that joy of receiving a gift. It's a wonderful thing. But it truly is more blessed, contradictory though it may seem, more blessed to give than it is to receive. I hope you'll be a blessed giver for the rest of your life. Thank you for going these six days, two weeks uh, of a journey with me where we looked at scriptural paradoxes. And there's so many of them, we'll probably come back on scriptural paradoxes again at another time in the future. Thank you.